In this video, we're talking about what to look for in a smash cake backdrop and where to find them. Hello again, everybody. My name is Daniel Troutman with thesmashcake.com, your online resource for all things smash cake, whether it be photography tutorials or advice like today's video on where to buy all the cool stuff you're going to need to be successful in smash cake photography. It all lives over there at thesmashcake.com. Now, today's video is going to be a two-parter. In the first half, we're going to talk about what you need to look for with a backdrop so that you don't pick the wrong backdrop and, you know, waste your time and money. And the second half of the video, of course, is going to be the several different locations that we buy our backdrops. And we love these places because we, we never get burned and we always get what we want. So stick around to the second half of today's video for that list of places where we buy our backdrops. Now, let's go ahead and get into the criteria that we always look for when choosing backdrops. Again, it's so that we don't choose the wrong one and waste our time and money. So the first thing on our list is, of course, cost. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and face it. We're in a business. I mean, it is an artistic business. We are artists, but we are monetizing that and it turns it into a business. And at that point, you really have to monitor your cost. Cost is what's gonna make or break your business. Cost of goods, cost of props, cost of camera gear. You really have to manage your nickels and dimes because it's in the nickels and dimes where businesses are lost. So it all starts with getting in good buying habits when it comes to buying things like backdrops. Now, there was a time I was up in Seattle for the weekend. I got to hang out with the fabulous and famous Miss Sue Bryce. And Miss Sue Bryce introduced me to a beautiful Oliphant backdrop. It was an amazing backdrop. And I thought to myself, I want one of those for my smash cake sessions. How off the chain would that be? So I asked Sue, I said, hey, Sue, how much did that run you? She looked me dead in the eyes and she said, $1,500. That's $1,500 for a six foot hand painted backdrop. Now it was the most beautiful backdrop I had ever seen, but at that price point, it simply isn't feasible because at the time, my sales average was in the four to $800 range and buying a $1,500 backdrop for a $400 sales average, it just wasn't feasible. So you really have to watch your nickels and dimes and you have to be responsible when it comes to buying your backdrops. So monitor your cost at all costs. Now, moving on from cost, the next thing to consider is size and size will actually determine the cost, right? I don't you don't need me to tell you that the larger backdrops cost more. So really what you're thinking is at that point, why don't I just buy all the small backdrops and save myself some money because I want to be responsible? Well, good on you for wanting to be responsible. But here's the inherent problem with buying backdrops that are too small. Let's take those videos, for example, we've all seen them there on YouTube where it talks about using a four by six panel that you get for lows at like for like thirty five dollars. We've all seen that video and we you know, most of us have tried that. And when you try using a panel that is four by six for a smash cake session, the problem you run into is that in order to get your subject so that their head doesn't poke over the top of that panel in the frame, you have to get your subject closer to the panel. Now what happens as you get closer and closer to your background, it's harder and harder to get that background out of focus. And as smash cake photographers, the holy grail for us is having that nice, beautiful, buttery, slightly out of focus background. That's what moms and dads go nuts for and that's what they spend the big money on. So we really, really wanna focus, no pun, on getting the background out of focus. And you just simply can't do that if your backdrop is too small. Now, the other thing you're going to say here is, well, OK, I could extend that small backdrop in Photoshop. And yes, you very much could. You absolutely could. Feel free to do that. But here's the thing. Again, we're in a business. And every time you dive into Photoshop, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, you are losing money because your client, they're paying you for finished images. They're not paying you by the hour. If they were, you could spend eight hours a day in Photoshop and be compensated for it. But that's really not the case of it. So what you have to remember is that every time you spend 20 or 30 minutes in Photoshop on a couple of images, extending those backgrounds, you're actually lessening the amount of money you make per hour on the project as a whole. So you're losing money every time you go into Photoshop. Now, to avoid all of that, what you have to do is just buy the right size backdrop. And fortunately for you, I failed miserably at doing that at the beginning part of my career. So you guys get to learn from my mistake. And really what I have found over the years of making lots of mistakes is that for me, the sweet spot really is a backdrop that's about seven foot or wider 
and about five foot or taller. Any less than that, and what you're gonna do is run into a problem where you're gonna have to spend too much time in Photoshop and you're not gonna make as much money per hour. The next thing that we look for when it comes to picking out the right backdrop for our studio is, are the elements on the 10 by 10 backdrop, are they to scale? And what I mean by that is that sometimes the manufacturers will design a 10 by 10 backdrop assuming that your subject is going to be a a standing upright adult, which means that the elements in the background, well, they're sized appropriately for an adult, but they might just look a little weird when photographing a baby. And those elements will exist at four to six feet uh, off the ground on the backdrop, which means when you take a one-year-old and you sit them down, there's really going to be no elements behind that one-year-old. You're not going to get the benefit of the background. So my recommendation is when buying a 10 by 10 backdrop, you're going to want to look for repeating patterns or abstracts because no matter what, there's always going to be an element behind your subject. Now, the next thing we look for is a scenic without a stupid floor printed on half of it. OK, I'm sorry, it is, but they are. They're absolutely stupid. And you can tell that the people that are selling these are not photographers, because honestly, how are you supposed to match that floor? How in God's name are you going to find the exact flooring that they used? And not only that, the scales wonky on the flooring. So now you have to the, the, the even if you find a matching floor, you're not going to be able to match up the boards, the scales all wrong. It just it's horrible. So really, if you have one with a floor on it, what you end up doing is just covering up that fake floor with some seamless. And what's the point of even putting it there? You've just taken that 10 by 10 backdrop, folded it in half. Now it's a five by now it's a five by 10. And it's just a total waste of money. So if it's got a printed floor on it, my God, do I avoid it like the plague. Now, if you want to see it done right, well, go ahead and stay tuned to the end of this video. We're going to talk about a vendor that I use all the time, and they definitely do it right every time. They, they go ahead and design these sets, but the floor they're using is just pure white, which means, well, you can add white seamless and it's going to match, well, seamlessly. And that is how you do it, folks. So stay tuned to the second half of this video, and we'll talk about that manufacturer and how much I love them and why I love them. The next thing we consider when buying backdrops for our studio is, are the backdrops that we're considering buying, are they printed slightly out of focus? Now these are hard to find, but when you do find them, oh my God, snap them up because when the background is already slightly out of focus, it gives you more options as a photographer. Now, instead of you know using 2.8 on your aperture to get your backgrounds out of focus, because that background's already out of focus, you can use an aperture like 4.0 or 5.6. And what that does is it guarantees that you're gonna get more in focus images throughout the entirety of that set. Now, when I shoot at 2.8, I know that anytime my subject just slightly moves one direction or another, that image that I just snapped may or may not be in focus. And as a business person and as an artist, what you want to do is create the most amount of variety for your clients as possible. And I know from experience that when I shoot exclusively at 2.8 during my sessions, I throw out a ton of photos because they're out of focus. So whenever you find a backdrop that's already out of focus and you can use an aperture like 4.0, or 5.6, well, then go ahead and do it because it just, like I said, gives you more options creatively as an artist. Now, last but not least on the list is versatility. And I will choose a background that is more versatile again and again and again. I've seen some beautiful backdrops, but they were kind of a, a one trick pony. They were a one use kind of deal. And I don't buy those because the more versatile the backgrounds you have, the more you can create without actually having to shell out at the end of the day for new backdrops. So if I had to buy a new backdrop every time I went ahead and built a set, I'd probably be broke. And instead what I'm doing is that most of the time I don't have to buy the backdrops anymore. And that, that money that I would have spent on that backdrop, guess where it goes? My pocket. <laughs> and as a business person, that makes me very, very happy when that happens. So the versatility of your backdrop is gonna be key there. Make sure that the ones you pick out are versatile. They have more than one use. That is pretty much the criteria that we use here at the smashcake.com to help us pick out the right backdrop for our smash cake sessions. And I truly hope that that list helps you on your journey to finding the right one for your smash cake session.
Now here comes the fun part. This is what we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna go ahead and let the cat out of the bag and tell you guys exactly where I buy my backdrops. It's a wonderful list that we've been cultivating over the years and I am absolutely happy to share it with you guys. So let's just get into the number one place where we buy our backdrops here at thesmashcake.com. All right, well, the first vendor on my super secret vendor list is Intuition Backdrops by Becky Gregory. Um, these backdrops are amazing, and they actually have backdrops specifically designed for Smash Cake photography. And they are probably my first go-to whenever I'm designing a set. I definitely check here first because their backdrops are absolutely quality. And the best part is, is that I know an artist is at the helm of that company, and they're not just in there to cash in. They're there to make quality stuff to help us create artistic images. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is bounce on over to intuitionbackgrounds.com and you're going to notice that they have a catalog and over here under backdrops, they, like I said, they have a section for smash cake photography, cake smash photography. It's right there. So go ahead and click on that and you'll be taken to their designs. Now look at these designs. Remember earlier when we were talking about how I don't like companies that have floors printed on their designs? Well, these guys have done a really good job of putting a floor on that design, but they use white seamless as the floor, which makes it super easy for us as photographers to just roll out some white seamless and the whole background and floor will match, well, like I said, seamlessly. And so these guys are doing it absolutely correct and that's what i mean by somebody who is actually a photographer actually an artist is designing these backdrops now even this one right here where you're looking at a sand colored floor you just roll out some of that same that sand colored seamless and you are good to go so absolutely love these guys now let's go ahead and click on one of these make it a little bit larger if we can you're going to see that these are really super cute um and as a guy i don't use that phrase very much but it's very very true these are super cute backgrounds and they're very much in the now and in style and the joy of intuition backgrounds is they're constantly updating their style and rotating their stock now we're going to go ahead and stop the music real quick and I want to mention that I am in no way shape or form connected to intuition backgrounds. I do not receive an affiliate commission. There is no connection between the two of us other than I am a massive fanboy of what they are doing over at that company because it literally like I said it's a bunch of artists creating artistic backdrops to help other artists elevate their art right it's beautiful and in a world of companies out there that are just existing to make money off of us and to not help us elevate our craft it really is refreshing to find a company like intuition background so the reason it's number one on the list is because it's always my number one pick when i go shopping for backdrops now, one of the other places that we source our backdrops is on Facebook. There are a lot of Facebook groups out there where other Smash Cake photographers get together and they sell each other their used equipment. So oftentimes you can buy a really nice backdrop at a reduced price from somebody who's used it and their style has kind of, uh, you know, moved on and they want to get rid of some stuff that no longer fits their brand and they do it on Facebook. Now, a lot of these groups will even let you trade. You can trade uh, backgrounds with other Facebook users that are in that same group. And it's a wonderful resource, especially for those of you just starting out who do not have a whole lot of cash. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and throw up a graphic and it'll show you a couple of these Facebook groups that we use. But of course, I'm going to link to those in the description section of the video as well. So there's no need to pause the video and write it down old school with a pen and paper. Just hit those links at the bottom of the video and you can go check out those Facebook groups for yourself. If you were to look in my prop closet, you're going to see a lot of backdrops from our next company. And that company is Kate backdrops. Now I have a very love hate relationship with Kate and I love it because back in the day when I was a struggling photographer and I was just starting my business, I could get a 10 by 10 backdrop from Kate for less than $150. But where I struggle with Kate is their business policies. For example, they have a program where you can literally take a picture of a cake smash set and upload that picture to Kate and Kate will turn around and make backdrops for sale out of those pictures and then pay the photographer for the image and on the surface that seems like a really good idea but what's happening is that a lot of times in those images is a background that was created by another company and under our current copyright laws here in our country that's a big fat no-no now over where Kate is based of course that they have no problem with that whatsoever so for them it's not an ethical dilemma 
For me, on the other hand, yes, I love the cheap backgrounds, but do I want to continue to support something I don't believe in? That really is the question, but I don't want to get into that today. That's what the comment section is in this video. That's what that's for. If you guys want to start a dialogue about those business practices, hit that comment section and I'll be happy to talk to you about it all day long. But I just really wanted you guys to know that yes, I shop at Kate Backgrounds, or at least I did in the beginning, and they are, for a lot of you who are just beginning, a great resource, so I really didn't want to leave them off the list. Now, the next place we source our backdrops from just happens to be the worldwide leader in e-commerce. And of course, I'm talking about Amazon.com. Amazon is a great place to find whatever you need, no matter how specific your need is. Chances are Amazon's got a backdrop that's going to fill it. But be warned, if you climb on Amazon, just don't make any other plans for the rest of the day because it is a bit of a time suck. It is a rabbit hole that oftentimes you will spend hours down. So just know that when you are looking at shopping for backdrops on Amazon.com. Now, if you don't feel like going down the Amazon.com rabbit hole and losing half of your day when shopping for backdrops, well, you can always check out, shameless plug, the smashcake.com. What we've done there is every item on our webpage is an Amazon link. We have sifted through Amazon for you, saving you hours worth of time. And all you have to do is just browse through all of the backdrops that we cherry picked specifically for smash cake photography over at the smashcake.com. So it is a valuable resource because because all the work has already been done for you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our video on how to buy a backdrop that will fit your needs and where to buy them. And I hope that this has been very, very helpful because, well, that's what I'm trying to do here is help out all of you fellow Smash Cake photographers. That is uh, really important to us because we want to strengthen the community by sharing what we know. So if there is a place that uh, you know about that we did not mention in today's video, maybe a vendor or even something to watch out for when choosing a backdrop, please utilize that comment section below because because again, as hokey as it sounds, the more we share, the more we grow as a community. Now, if you want to learn more about what we're doing over here at thesmashcake.com, of course, we put out a video every week and all you have to do is hit that subscribe button and ring that bell and you will be the first to be notified every time we post a brand new video. Like, for example, the ones that are going to pop up right over here. Now, until next time, guys, I'm Daniel Troutman with the smashcake.com. I want to thank you guys for catching up with me again this week, and I will see you guys in next week's video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.